Right, let's take a look at the penultimate sprint stage of this year's tour. 173 kilometres from yesterday's Finnish town of Tours to saint amand montrand So relatively short and not much between start and finish except one barely detectable fourth category climb, the Côte de Crotte, and the day's intermediate sprint which comes just past the 112 kilometre point. With so much at stake, it's inconceivable that the day's breakaway will succeed. And once they're caught, everybody will be looking to get on the wheel of the fastest man, which, as of yesterday, is Marcel Kittel. And now Team Saxo Tinkoff of Alberto Contador said, right, well, we're going to come forward now and give you a little bit of a demonstration of how we can ride in the crosswinds. That is amazing. They're, they're all working together to the demise now of Alessandro Valverde. And so they're willing to uh, profit as well by giving some pacemaking. They must have worked out that they will be the new team leaders in the Tour de France tonight. So they're spelling a Belkin at the front. And the team has started it all. Amigo Farm a quick step. There's a, there, and the speed here, they've caused a split by about nine riders. Well, Chris Froome has been caught out there, and this is an amazing move by our, our, the, the team of Alberto well. Contador. Now, this just goes to show how important it is to have a strong team. Well, can you believe this? Froome had to get himself organised when the original split came, but he had no problem. His team put him right in the correct position, but this time they've lost Richie Port, remember Team Sky, and they split the Mayo Jean of the Tour de France. This is turning about to be an incredible day in the Tour. This is a very urgent moment, and this is what's going to happen time and time again over the last week of the race. Everybody knows that Chris Froome's team is weak. They've lost two riders. One rider eliminated, uh, Vasily Kirienka. One rider eliminated by, by a crash, Edvard Bosenhagen. That means he's down to just six teammates in this race. Cavendish talking to Sylvain Chavon in French and saying, have a quick look behind. There's the groups now as they continue to chase Paul. This is a most amazing, but uh, alertness by Mark Cavendish and his team. Well, they are the guys who started this move off. Also alertness by a certain Peter Sagan as well, Phil, because he saw that happening and scuttled straight up there to do it. But, you know, we have heard Alberto Contador say he feels that this is the strongest team he's ever brought to the Tour de France. And today we're seeing them on the eve of the last week of the race. They're showing today that they're still very strong in depth. Well, do you remember Contador in the Tour of Spain, which he went on to win? He, on a day nobody expected it, he went out on the attack and he won the race. And here he is now, looking to gain some time back, lost to Chris Froome, because Froome has missed this split and he doesn't really have the team around him now to chase it down. Well, he has three teammates, but he has to, bear, he has to figure out now whether he's got any mates in that group behind him, because Cadell Evans is in that group and Cadell has got a number of teammates up alongside him. Will Cadell Evans and the BMC do any of the pacemaking? There are the three riders on the front there from Team Sky, four riders from Team Sky, so they're not in too bad a situation. But I tell you what, I bet they wish they still had Richie Port with them. This is the time when you have to be calm and collected if you're leading the Tour de France. You must not panic, and that's what Chris Froome has to do now. That's what his team management have to tell him in the group behind. Calm down, relax. If it's going to come back together, it will. If it doesn't, you're only going to lose uh, 30 seconds or a minute. But there's a lot of riders in that group behind are still keen right. to keep the pressure on. This is Saxo Tinkoff, a mass attack. They've quickly been joined by the Belkin team, as we just see here, Peter Kenyok. Uh, slipped to the back of this group here and uh, still a little bit injured from when he was knocked off his bike. Well, there are 15 riders in that group and uh, looking a little bit further back, you can see the group of the yellow jersey. There's only about 10 seconds separating them. Sagan and Bodnar have got into that group for uh, Cannondale. Fulsang has got in there for Astana. Four riders from uh, Saxo Tinkoff, Contador, Bernati, Nicholas Roach and Michael Rogers. A little bit further back, the Omega Farmer Quickstep riders are Cavendish, Chavanel and Terpstra. Two riders from Belkin are Molema and Tendam. Those are the two best riders in the overall standings. We are in for a massive chase again on the run down towards the finish line. 27 seconds. That was the face there of Michael Rogers. Team Katusha, they've been caught out on the back foot as well. They've got their man Rodriguez in 11th place overall. So there's a number of teams, there's a fair bit of firepower in this group to quite possibly nullify that move by the 12 riders in that group. But Cavendish, he's been very alert today. What a racer. 
Now, three minutes 20 back to the Valverde group. I think we can start to forget about it. Uh, 3.26, they're now saying it is, because that group is losing huge time. They'll have to race all the way to the line for sure, because uh, he's just got to hope he can get some of this back in the mountains. Well, the impetus has gone out of the Alejandro Valverde group, but it certainly hasn't come out of this bike race that we're looking at here at the front because 12 riders have now gone clear and two sprinters were very attentive and saw that move. One of them, Peter Sagan, who's right in here with the green jersey on his back, and Mark Cavendish. Well, Contador is pushing this on. It's going out to about 15 seconds, so it's not uh, off the radar yet. Uh, but at these speeds, and for so long that they've been holding these speeds, how much firepower is left now in that chase group? Because they couldn't follow this move when it was made by Saxo Tinkoff. No, they were caught out. They hit them very, very hard, and it's all been because of these crosswinds this afternoon. You see one man who has been caught out as well in the yellow jersey group is Andre Greipel, and he must be... Uh, really biting his tongue at the moment, wishing that he'd mean, been able to integrate that group. I think they will get pulled back before the finish, but it does really just lay down the rules for the race as we go into the final week. Well, we see you said that about the Valverde group, and look what happened to them. The one Astana rider here has got himself into the move as well and is willing to work because this is a, a gap which is going to take away all of the sprinters except Mark Cavendish. That's Jakob Fulsang, the rider from Astana, who's seen the move there this afternoon. But the green jersey of Peter Sagan, he's a man who we regard very often as being a sprinter or an opportunist. But you know what? He knows how to find the right moves to get into. A very, very clever move, an astute move by Saxo Tinkoff. Uh, they saw all of the pacemaking that had been done in this breakaway group here this afternoon. There are five riders from Saxo Tinkoff in this group. Contador, Bonatti, and I've just seen uh, Roman Krutiger in there as well with Nicholas Roach and Michael Rogers. We're now heading through the town of uh, Chateau neuf sur cher at 23 and a half kilometres to go to the finish. So, this is a very, very interesting move by Alberto Contador, who's got a whole host of his teammates in this group, but they're holding a 12-second advantage over the yellow jersey group and Chris Froome. Ten kilometres now to go for the 14 leaders who hold on to a 40-second advantage over the yellow jersey group of Christopher Froome. 41 seconds is the gap to the group Mayo Jean of Chris Froome, which means at this moment, Paul, he's lost 41 seconds of his lead uh, to Bout Mollema, Lawrence Tendam, Roman Kreuzinger and, uh, and Alberto Contador. Now, how much do you think they can lose or will they come back? Well, I have a feeling they're going to survive here this afternoon. Uh, you know, that's why Chris Froome has been looking for every possible second in the first week of the Tour de France. That's why he attacked like a maniac up to Axe Poidomen to get time initially. Then that's why he rode such a hard individual time trial to give himself that buffer. He can afford to lose one and a half minutes uh, on a run towards a finish like this, but he wouldn't like to give it away. He will keep his team riding as long and as hard as possible to limit his losses but he's not going to lose the overall lead at the end of the day, but we will see a slight change in the standings. Look at that, six riders from one team getting into a 14-man leading group, and it's up another two seconds, 49 seconds. It's nudging out towards the minute, and that would be a big loss for Chris Froome, and it's not just the time, it's the way the team seems to be imploding as well at the moment. And Chris Froome must be feeling pretty lonely down there just now. Geraint Thomas and Ian Stannard are the only two riders left. And we're hearing on race radio that Geraint Thomas is also in trouble. That's Ian Stannard. Well, they've chased hard as they can, and they now have to limit their losses. But the impetus, Phil, is going out of this group. As we can just see the group here, Cavendish and Sagan are riding in tandem. Sagan behind Mark Cavendish at the moment. Uh, but these boys are going to keep the pressure on all the way to the line if the sprinters start to play cat and mouse, as it were. This is about time to win the Tour de France, and the man most likely to win the most is Alberto Contador just now. But he hasn't outfoxed the other riders who are around him in the overall standings. Uh, Bout Malema and Roman Krutziger, his own teammate, and Lawrence Tendam. 57 seconds now. We're actually creeping up to the one-minute margin. Chris Froome has been put back onto the back foot. 
Well, Chris Froome is in jail here. He cannot get out. He can't get to the front and waste energy chasing. He's relied on his teammates. There's only two of them left, and they're looking extremely tired at the moment. Michael Rogers now, he does his first share at the front as he drives through the speed as well. These riders are all working for time. Matteo Tessato can't wait to get round Michael Rogers. The gap is going out now, 64 seconds. Gerard Thomas tries to do something about that. This man who rides with a hairline fracture of his pelvis. Ian Stannard is the only other rider surviving now. He's third in line and going through. Only two teammates left with Froome. Well, uh, currently it would look like this. Uh, Froome would have a two-and-a-half-minute advantage over Bauk Malema, a gap that was 3.37 at the start of the day. 1.05, and it's the French teams now trying to pull all this back together. Chris Froome's team is crumbling, and that's pretty scary for when you imagine we've still got 18 massive climbs to come in the last week of this race. There will be a lot of tactical thinking, that's for sure, because this wasn't supposed to be a difficult day in the life of the riders thinking of winning the Tour de France, nor tomorrow, in fact, it would be the first big climb of Mont Ventoux. 8.05 to Valverde, he's out of the top 11 riders in the Tour. Well, when you look at this group, Phil, you've got one rider or two riders from different teams are doing the pacemaker in the front. When you get into a breakaway situation and you've got five teammates alongside you and you're in a situation like this when you can win the Tour, you can dig that little bit deeper, you can pu push yourself that little bit further, you won't hold anything back at all. And that's why the leading group of 14 riders is still extending its advantage over the main field. These riders at the front, 14 of them, they're all sitting line in file behind the Saxo Tinkoff boys. They started the attack to split the field. They're going under three kilometres to go, and every second will still count. These boys, about three and a quarter minutes from the finish. And they will keep riding like this all the way to the finish line because this is all about time. It's all about Alberto Contador and the other riders in this group getting a time back on Chris Froome. Chris Froome pulled time back on them in the mountains and then again in the individual time trial. But since then, he's been put against the ropes this afternoon. His team have crumbled, they've fallen apart. They lost a man yesterday in that accident. And this is the nervousness of trying to remain in the lead in the bike race like the Tour de France. The pressure is on every day. Well, we must, there's also another good sprinter in this group, Daniela Bernati, but I don't think he'll match Cavendish and Sagan, but they've got now... Remember, this has been a chase which has gone on for hours, that everybody is going to be tired. One minute and six seconds is the gap now on yellow, and we're nearly eight and a half minutes now, back to the Valverde group, and he's still a long way out from the finish. Well, you mentioned uh, Daniele Bernati in this group, Phil. I have a feeling he may well have put a lot of effort into making yep. sure of the success of this breakaway. At two kilometres to go, it's a minute and seven seconds. And look at Cavendish there, locked into the wheel of Peter Sagan. Yes, they're just going to follow each other and make the move. It'll be a very much a one-on-one -on -one sprint between the two fastest finishers in the world. Oh, what a way to win a sprint, to take part in a race like today. It was Cavendish's team that started the trouble, and it's Contador's team who is adding to it. Well, Contador looking uh, very comfortable there, I have to say, very happy with this move that he's made. He and the team uh, took advantage of all of the pacemaking that was done early on by Omega Farmer Quickstep and by Team Belkin, and now they're going to finish it off this afternoon with what has been a phenomenal day of racing. Nicky Terpstra now comes up to the front. He's going to try and see if he can uh, just cause a little bit of a surprise well, here. He's, he's flown off because that's the advantage. One minute, two seconds. There's got to be reaction from the chase. We're, lo we're looking for the one kilometre very, very shortly now. This is a good move. This is a good tactic. What he's done, he's taken the sting out of Cannondale's move there because they've had to force down to get him back into the yep. fold and that has put a little move and that's a great ride there by Terpstra now sitting in a good position is Mark Cavendish going round the court and this is the moment now when Cannondale are going to have to keep the pace nice and high but still the Saxo Tinkoff look at the left hand side you've got Sylvain Chavanel he is going to be the lead out man Cavendish is right on the wheel of Peter Sagan in the green jersey this is through a little triangle just before the finish to avoid a roundabout they'll swing off to our right and their left 
He has got Cavendish behind. Savinel is going to bring them into the straight. And look at Sagan looking where Cavendish is. He holds the inside very tightly because Cavendish could get through here. They line up for the finish. He's got to wait, though, because it's about 450 metres from that corner. Sagan is right in second position. Let's not forget that yesterday Mark Cavendish was beaten right on the front there. Savinel is trying to turn himself inside out. Now you can well, see Sagan is at the front, a long way from the finish. They, de they delivered Sagan to the front, and now Sagan has had to hesitate and take the wheel of Mark Cavendish. But Mark Cavendish and his team have done all the work to create an incredible day, has made and taken revenge because he was clearly clear, and that is his 25th victory. And nobody in the world of the Tour de France has ever won 25 stages of the road race only. So he's got his own little slice of history this year. Now, as they come up to the same straight, keep your eye on the clock as it counts here. This is the most important part. He's heading up towards that minute. Uh, Chris Froome is in the center of the thing. Greipel will try to take out the sprint. Marcel Seberg bringing him to the fore here. The polka dot jersey in the, the spotted uh, shorts there. He's in second place as he tries to change wheels here. Greipel, now he sees the finish. So he'll take 15th place on the stage. He'll get some points for that, and that's what he wants. But he could not get back up. And the most important thing, watch the clock. One minute, eight seconds as they hit the line is the loss today for Chris Froome against four dangerous men. The only consolation for Chris Froome was that a fifth dangerous man, Alejandro Valverde, had lost even more time than he had. But first things first, which once again today meant Mark Cavendish. It was a two-man sprint in the end with Peter Sagan, the 25th of his tour career and the first from a breakaway. It was no less of a team effort though, more perhaps since the Omega lead-out began about 60 kilometres into the stage. So there's the result, Cavendish from Sagan, then Bauke Mollema, Jakob Fulsang, Nicky Terpstra, Roman Kreutziger, Alberto Contador and Lawrence Ten Dam. Behind the big names in the breakaway were some equally big ones losing time in Group 2. A minute and nine seconds down, most notably the race leader Chris Froome. Dan Martin and Nairo Quintana were in that Group 2. But the day's big loser, and to a puncture which Belkin chose to capitalise on, was Alejandro Valverde eventually rolling in 70th and losing 9 minutes 54. So for the 25th time, the sight of Mark Cavendish on the podium as a Tour de France stage winner, with the chance to make it 26 on the Champs-Élysées a week on Sunday. He's now joint third on the all-time list, level with André Le Duc and behind only Bernardino and Eddie Merckx, but win number 25 was unlike any of the previous 24. Oh, I mean, it's incredible. We talked about it. We knew the wind was strong. And I just said to Gert, I said, oh... Like strong enough to break it now. This was after 60k, and Tony's like, oh, wait a bit longer. Next thing, gate goes, <laughs> and it just kicked off. Then you know, it wasn't strong enough to break it, but uh, we just kept going. Then Saxo went later, and then oh, it's incredible. So, so happy, so proud of the guys. They just rode out of their skin today, out of their skin. When echelons start, it's kind of like you know, if you have that feeling you fall through ice, you know, you got like five seconds, you got five seconds, or it's over. And that's exactly what it's like in a national. You know, you've got five seconds to make it right. Otherwise, that's it. And I knew I had it. This split tap, boom, sprinted across. <sighs> and we were gone then. But uh, it wasn't easy. But I'm, I'm incredibly lucky to have those guys, you know. We're a Belgian team. We, we're, we're used to riding in the crosswinds, you know. The guys are experienced at it. They're strong at it. And uh, along with Belkin, you know, it was a good combination to get that first move going. And then, yeah, the finish, it was just that. I knew Sagan with just one guy. I knew we'd be able to, if I stayed behind him, I knew then I'd be able to get it, you know, uh, so I just stayed behind him and, uh, yeah, I was able to win. I'm so happy. Then. More than the one that came at the finish, this was the key sprint of the day for Mark Cavendish. His black helmet just visible as he decided to go with the Saxo Tinkoff move and fought to get across, while Chris Froome, or perhaps Froome's legs, decided to stay with his teammates in the group behind. Froome's still in the yellow jersey, of course, and looks at least as strong as any of his rivals individually and in going uphill. But with his team struggling, he's vulnerable to concerted action from those with more and stronger support. Here's how the standings look tonight, then. Bauke Mollema is the new second-place rider, 2 minutes 28 behind Froome. Alberto Contador is up to third at 2 minutes 45, ahead of his teammate Roman Kreuziger. Mollema's teammate, Lawrence Sendam, is at three minutes and a second. Jakob Fulsang at four minutes 39. 
Mikhail Kwiatkowski and Nairo Quintana, having finished with Froome today, stay at 4.44 and 5.18 back respectively. And Quintana should have Alejandro Valverde at his disposal now as a super domestique. He's dropped from 2nd to 16th, 12 minutes 10 down now, so he's no threat to Chris Froome, although plenty of other people are. Someday that, put into perspective what damage was done to your cause, I mean a first setback on the tour for you. Definitely, I mean, um, we did have a quite a comfortable advantage coming into today and we're coming out uh, having lost a minute of that to to Molema from the Belkin team and uh, Alberto Contador from, from Saxo Bank. Um, again, just another reminder to us that this race is far, far from over and uh, we're really going to need every second we can get at this point. Was it just, I mean, what, what was the problem? Was it just not being there at the right place at the right time, not quite alert enough? Is that what did the damage? Possibly. I think when that, when that split went, um, it was literally only the 15 riders who, uh, first 15 riders of the peloton who got across there. Um, I think I was just behind Cavendish's wheel when, when Cav sprinted across, and I think he was the last guy who made it in. So um, as soon as I saw that, I, I sat up and I thought, OK, let me just keep calm, wait for my teammates, regroup, and uh, start the chase from behind. What about that chase? It didn't seem as organised as it might be, and the, and the gap actually went out possibly more than you would have expected when it first went? Um, yeah, possibly. I mean, obviously, they were really motivated up front, but, um, yeah, we just tried to limit it as, as much as possible and uh, keeping in mind that this weekend we've got a really hard weekend coming up with quite an undulating day tomorrow and then uh, Mont Ventoux the day after, so still going to be a lot of racing to come. And another man down in your team, you do not want to weaken it any further and I guess another hard day chasing on an unexpectedly difficult stage won't have done your cause much good in that respect. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> no such thing as an easy day at this Tour de France.